I think that Chargers deserve a little bit more attention than they've been given in the recent history or recent past. People that are just starting out this hobby, this sport, they kind of run out and just get the cheapest stuff that they can find, trying to make their hobby dollar go as far as they can and uh, just try to make the most of their money. The Charger itself is, is a very important aspect of all this because no matter what we're doing, we're always charging batteries, whether it be a tiny whoop or a five inch or something that's much, much bigger, we always have to charge everything. So it's always a pain and it really does deserve a little bit more attention. While the cheapest chargers that newcomers might run out and get are not bad, they do charge fine. The larger, more expensive chargers do a slightly better job and a better job in the respect that the cells of the batteries are more evenly balanced. It does a better job keeping track of the cells. It could potentially be safer. And I really don't know all the ins and outs, but those are the things that I have personally noticed having come from the crappiest chargers and moving up to more expensive chargers. For the newcomer, I recommend you go with one of these cheapo, they're not really cheapo, ISDT chargers. This is an older model. They have a newer model that now does a much higher wattage and much higher amperage. And what I have attached here is a balance board that I have, I have created and soldered myself. These boards can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. If you're more advanced, if you're, if you're an advanced pilot, you already know what you're doing in the charge game. And this video is not for you. And if you're charging many batteries, you're probably using that charger that can push like 30 amps at all the volts and charge all your batteries in 10 minutes and parallel charging everything. This is not for you. For the newcomer and kind of the regular flyer like I am, I don't fly like race all the time every day. I don't have to charge 30 packs a day. Uh, these battery chargers are much more useful. And the biggest reason why I would recommend this one over anything else for a newcomer is because I have just hacked a uh, laptop power supply to just plug in to this charger and power it because it only takes DC, it doesn't take AC. It requires you to provide it with enough DC power to charge your battery. And that's a really, really cheap and easy way to have a very good charger. This company does a really great job at creating chargers because that's what they do. And you get something that you can always use because you can use this out in the field. The power input is nine to 32 volts, which is a very important feature that I'm gonna discuss in a minute. But let's look at these two bigger chargers. If you're new and you are, are unknowing, you're probably gonna end up doing this stuff a lot more than you think. And it's, it's worth your money to just spend a little bit of money, worth your time to spend a little bit of money on a good charger that you don't really have to worry about that's just gonna serve you well. This is the CQ3 charger. And I have had this charger for a year and a half now. It, I think today is still the best value in chargers you can get. I think it's 160 bucks from GetFPV, which is the cheapest reseller of this charger. They think there's a couple others that sell for 160 bucks. And what it gives you is four lanes of 100 watt charging. What that means is that you can get each of these, these are, these are four independent chargers. So you don't have to balance charge, you don't have to worry about anything, just slap your battery in and hit the go. And it charges independently of all the other batteries. So you can charge a five cell with a four cell with a three cell, and it's really, really nice. The drawbacks of this charger are that it only does about five, six amps per channel, which is typically just fine for anything under, you know, 3,000 milliamps. And the number one biggest drawback to me is that if you're taking it out as a field charger, it only takes 4S power in, as you can see there, 11 to 18 volt input. It's really, really frustrating because it's much easier to just get a massive 6S cell that you have for some big rig that you're flying that uh, is just easier to just take with you and charge all your little batteries. It's also a little bit large. ISTT has recently made this charger, which I really underestimated how convenient this charger is. While I still think that this big one is a much better value, this little one is the most convenient thing I have used. And I'm gonna show you next what that convenience factor is. But if you take a look at it, it's got two charge lanes. It does 200 watts, 12 amps. So that's six amps per, per lane, which is perfect for sub 2000 milliamp charges, uh, even larger ones if you wanna wait a little bit longer. It has a USB port. It has a uh, computer port, which you can actually update the firmware when they do have firmware updates, if they do have up, up, uh, firmware updates. And it has a built-in 
AC-DC converter, which is probably the most important feature because if you look at chargers, a lot of them don't come with the AC-DC port and you have to go out and get your own AC-DC converter, which adds another 50, 60 bucks to the whole package. And it doesn't even provide enough amps for the thing to charge all the batteries at the amperage that it's, it's meant to run at. So this is a really, really good value charger because it comes with all the And the one biggest flaw about this charger is that it only takes AC input does not take DC input. I don't know why they decided to do that. I don't know what their rationale about that is, but if it could take 6S input, it would literally be the perfect charger and it would be worth every penny because of how convenient it is. First and foremost, note where I am. I am outside. I strongly, strongly urge everybody to charge their batteries outside on a hard surface that cannot catch fire. I know it happens extremely rarely, but if you guys follow Gab707, he actually had a battery go up in flames in his apartment and it burnt down his entire apartment and everything in it. So very sad story for him, but don't let that happen to you. Do not charge your batteries indoors and do not leave your batteries charging unattended. That includes the big giant ones, which are even more dangerous. Again, it doesn't happen often, but if you look at the batteries that we fly, these are new ones, they typically get damaged and you don't know what kind of damage the battery has been through and you don't know what's going to happen when you plug it onto the charger next. So please do not charge your batteries indoors by anything fire that can catch fire, nothing like that. Please, please do not. Okay, so this charger, as I said, this one is super duper convenient. Both of these do high voltage, they both do various kinds of batteries, that's not an issue. What is the issue is that if I want to charge a 6S pack on this, I have to click this button, change it to 6S, click it again, it has a milliamp readout that you can change, and then that also changes the amp that it charges at, and I can change the amp that it charges at independently of the milliamps because it has a capacity limiter. I am not really sure why it's necessary to have a capacity limiter on a charger, but you know that's that's that. And then you have to click enter, and you have to hold it to charge and when you plug the battery in you got to hold the button to start charging that's really really cumbersome and I have charged probably 5,000 packs on this charger now let's look at this charger it has two charge lanes I can plug a 4s or a 6s in no problem let's plug it in which I would probably put extensions on these light ports so I don't have to pick up the charger to plug them in and look the charger automatically picked up that it's a 6s pack I mean, just look at the whole readout of the display on this thing. This company got into the game because they said that they wanted to innovate with chargers. Now, I don't know if this is true innovation, but it's kind of common sense and logical to have like a nice little readout to see what you're doing. So when you click on this charge lane, it shows you your voltages of each cell, and you go down and it shows you, you know, the temperature of cell and you know what's going on. When you click, it automatically has the cell count as 6S. You can change the voltage to whatever you want you can change it to whatever kind of battery you want and then you can click start and it goes but check this out if I go to lane 2 and I click it has also been set to 6s so not only did it lane 1 get set lane 2 got set too because nothing else is on there charging I'm gonna stop this right now because it's gonna make a lot of noise but now check this out I'm going to plug in a battery in lane 2, which is a 4S pack. And now let's take a look. 4S. That is the most convenient thing I have ever seen. And I underestimated how convenient it was until I went to the race this last week and I was charging all my batteries and it was just so easy to just plug in whatever and just hit start. And another thing, when the battery is almost full, it doesn't it doesn't just wait for it to fill up and then alarm you it gives you a sound it sounds an alarm when it's balancing so once the battery is almost done charging it kind of just balances all the cells to finish off the battery to top off all the cells you you can pull it off before that and use it and that's when the alarm sounds it first sounds when it's in that last final balancing stage so it saves you time somebody the person that is designing the software and the firmware and this this display for these chargers is really doing something right because like these little things they don't sound like much but when you're doing this stuff day in day out all the time it makes a huge 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 difference 
Now again, this is not, these are not like super pro level chargers. If you're a pro, you already know what you're doing. This video is not helpful to you in any way, shape or form. But if you're intermediate and not pro, like 99.999% of us, I think that this charger is a great, great option. And I, and I couldn't believe how surprisingly convenient it was when I started using it. It is not the only option. There are plenty of other options. If you have your cheap hobby charger, you know, by all means, keep using it. Please charge outside. This is just an option that I wanted to share with you guys because I'm very impressed with this and it has already become my primary charger. I don't really use the big one anymore unless I'm charging a lot of packs or I'm going to an event where a lot of people are charging. This big one, I charge packs so fast on this big one that I can't fly them faster. Like it charges everything faster than I can fly. So if you have four charge lanes and you're charging at about six six amps, five to six amps per pack, it's it's great. I mean, you can't you can't stop flying. Like you, you can't lose power when you're flying. Like you always have a fresh pack ready to go. Don't forget to floss.